Hey guys, it's Julie from Julie's Designs. Today I'm at my parents' house and we are doing a faux shiplap wall in their master bedroom. And I'm gonna show you how we do it for very cheap. And it's pretty simple to put up. If you don't have a lot of carpentry experience, you can probably still do it. You only need a few simple tools. So first we're gonna start off with my favorite product is the five millimeter underlayment that you can get at the hardware store. I'm gonna show y'all the tag. So this is what it looks like. I'm not sure if it's gonna be backwards or not. And it comes in eight feet by four feet pieces. And it costs under $13, under $14. Um, it's like $13 and some change for a eight foot by four feet sheet. And they'll cut it down for you. So today we're using six inch strips. And you can get six, six inch strips out of an eight foot by four foot board. Now, one thing to consider is that last piece that they cut is going to be a little bit smaller than the other pieces. So you want to kind of line them up and make sure that you've got those pieces separated. You can use the pieces that are going to be a little bit shorter than six inches, but you want to make sure to use it all on the same strip. And what you will also need is we're using a finishing nail gun. These make it go so much faster if you have one of these. And of course, you're gonna need an air compressor to go with it. And then we're using one and a quarter inch finishing nails. You'll need a pencil and a tape measure. And you'll also need a jigsaw to cut around the edges like light sockets or outlets or moldings. Luckily, there's no moldings on this wall. So we just have to cut around a few light sockets and electrical sockets and that's it. And then also a miter saw to cut a straight edge because you will have to cut some of them. So, and we decided to paint it, she wanted it uh, painted the same color as a wall. So I'm putting the pieces up and then she's painting. I did this by myself at my house, but it is nice having an extra person just to help hold the board. She helps me hold the longer boards. And then while I'm figuring out the cuts and cutting, she's painting. So it makes it go a little bit faster. You can paint the boards ahead of time, but there's really no reason to do that. We've just been painting them as you come up, as we put them up. Now, if you wanna, this top piece up here, the first one, if you do want to paint that one, you can, because then you can uh, avoid having to trim it. And anytime you can avoid trim work, that's great. So if you want to paint the top pieces, the ones that are going to be against a different color, you can paint those first and you don't have to go back and trim it. And if you want to sand the edges a little bit, uh, usually the uh, this hot part is smooth already. But if you want to sand the edges, if they're messed up, then you can sand those. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. Most of the time they're fine. So that's a personal preference. And then we also are not using spacers. We're just eyeballing it. I would suggest just eyeballing it because it's really hard to get every crack perfect because the wood is uneven sometimes. So even with spacers, you're not going to get it perfect. So you might as well just eyeball it and get it as even as possible. And I'm also not stressing too much of where the cracks are. What I do is you start off with a long strip and you're gonna have cuts. So the piece you cut off, you just put that on the next one and go from there. Just don't think about it too much. Like I said, you just use the pieces that you cut off and then you start with the next one and that'll keep your cracks kind of separated out. So I wanna show y'all what it looks like up close. You can see the cracks aren't exactly perfect, but it doesn't look bad. And since the, if you wanted to do the back wall a different color, you could, but when you do it the same color, the cracks show up even a little bit less. And then we're not gonna fill in the nail holes. We just add a little bit of extra paint and fill them in with paint. Now, if you wanted to, you could putty them and sand them and all that, but to me, it's unnecessary. If you're doing a shiplap wall, you're going for that rustic look and the nail holes really don't even show enough to stress about it. So you can see that the cracks are separated evenly. I'm sorry, not evenly. 
I didn't worry about putting them evenly. What I did was I did a long board, wherever we cut one off, then we went to the, the next line with that board. Don't think you need to overthink it too much. Now, if you wanted all your cracks to line up, you're more than welcome to do that. We just got to electrical outlets and I wanted to show y'all what we did. What we did was we unscrewed it from the wall and then we put our board behind it and then we're gonna screw it back. That way you can put your plate on top, but it doesn't pull it out very much, just as thick as the board. But you're gonna need to do this if you want your plate to go back on top. So we are finished with the wall. It took us about five hours and we ended up using five uh, boards five eight by four feet boards which are fourteen dollars a piece so it ended up cost, costing us about seventy dollars to do this one wall and we used about a gallon of paint one thing that i forgot to say when i was telling you all the tools you needed is you'll need a stud finder what you want to do is use your stud finder and mark all your studs so that way you can make sure you're putting your nails into a stud we didn't need that for this room because when they built this house, they put uh, plywood behind all the drywall. So no, no matter where you put a nail in, it's going to hit uh, a piece of wood. So it came out really great. My mom is really happy with it. Thank y'all so much for watching and tune in for more projects. Give this video a big